You're listening to the Finding Careers End podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and I'm joined again today by Ricky Baez. Ricky, how are you? I am doing fantastic, Pete. It's Friday. We're in Florida. We can't complain. No, well, you can, but no one's going to care. No, no one's, <laughs> no one's going to care. You're right. So we won't complain. We'll, we'll choose not to. And instead, we'll talk about something that's relevant to our listeners, which is the reference process. Yes. It's a pretty important thing in the entire interview process necessary to get a job in a lot of cases, most cases I would say, but it's not always the easiest part uh, to handle. A lot of people don't know who to use as a reference, how to go about asking someone to be a reference. So that's what we're here to talk about today. Absolutely. And, and folks references it's to me, Pete references is no different than you looking for a plumber and you're asking for your friends and neighbors on who's a great plumber. That's exactly what references do um, if you're looking for a job, right? It's just it's just somebody other than yourself talking up your skill set and talking up who you are as a person. Well, it's it's saying, hey, I, I, I may want to hire this plumber, right? But I want to find out whether this person is actually as good as they say they are. So that's what I think of as, as a reference. It's someone who, who can attest to your skills, your background, your ability, your character, and effectively uh, give a you know, confirmation that you are who you claim to be, right? Who your resume says you are, who you appear to be through the interview process. So it's a really important step. And as a longtime staffing company owner, it's something I take very seriously. More, I would say more seriously than most because our reputation is, is on the line when we recruit a candidate and submit that candidate for consideration to one of our clients. It is our, you know, line of defense, I'll say, that's that's necessary. And I'll tell you, there's nothing worse than getting a phone call to say, did you check that person's reference? Because you know it's not good, whatever would come next. And uh, I would always want to be able to say definitively, yes, I did. So I think it's a really important part of the process. But now in your entire HR uh, uh, career, what would you say? I mean, do you think most companies take it seriously? I don't think they do. I think some do, but most don't. The only companies that take it seriously are the ones who got burnt by not doing it, right? It's like we're in a seatbelt, right? Ah, oh, why do I need this? Why do I need this? Until you get into a fender bender and it could have been worse if you didn't have your seatbelt on, you quickly realize the value of it, <laughs> right? Same thing here. Um, actually, I think I was reading a story um, that I used from my class uh, about a year ago. It was a big retail organization that that hired somebody, didn't check any references, and this person turned out to be a violent criminal. Right. That just wasn't really um, um, arrested for it. But what ended up happening is, is that it, it's they did something that got the organization in trouble. And then you get that question. The question is, did you check this person's reference? Run their background. Right. I mean, that yeah, absolutely. So and, and those stories do do happen a lot. Um, that's a little bit of a different um, you know, topic, but mm -hmm. still relevant. Uh, you know, is this person uh, going to be a good hire? We yes. we know or at least I strongly believe that you really don't know what someone's like till you live with them. Right. And, and, and you, you know, they can interview well, they can um, look great on paper. It seems, seems like a match made in heaven, but when you actually have someone in the seat and you have to see each other day to day, you, you get to know what someone's really like, yep. just like in any, any relationship. So this is that extra layer, right? A, a, a criminal history. It, is this person a felon? Well, that's, that's relevant to know, you know for a it's lot of jobs, true. right? Um, but how well did this person perform in the past? And your seatbelt analogy is a really good one because when I was, I'm so old, Ricky, that they used to have driver's ed in school where you learn to drive. <laughs> and okay. I, I remember a, a guest came in one day. It was someone who worked for the police department, an investigator. And he said, you know, here's a bunch of 15 year olds, right? Who probably weren't inclined to wear seatbelts uh, habitually. And he said, I've never unbuckled a dead body. And, and he said, and I've dealt with a lot of dead bodies and it just resonated with me. Wow. So is I, I got the right message at a young age. Yeah. And I, I, so that is a really good analogy because when I think of, of references, it's easy to cut corners, right. As an employer, but you, you shouldn't. And so for candidates who are really speaking to today, be prepared for it. Right. And so a lot of people, if you're young in your career, especially you don't think you have anyone to give as a reference or you don't know who you should mm. give as a reference. So that's who I really want to focus on today. 
we'll let the employers worry about themselves separately, right? Um, or hire a, a really good staffing company who will do it for you. That's that, yeah, that option. There you go. But let's let's start with that. So we yeah. we've already said that a reference is someone who can attest to who you are, what you've done, what you give give your prospective employer some indication of what you'll be like if they hire you. But if you don't, if you don't have any work history, where do you start? Right? Where where do you start? Well, let's first break down the different kinds of references, right? There's professional. If you don't have a professional history, great. We'll we'll get to that later. Academic. If you're young, you have academic history in terms of professors, teachers, right? You and then you have character references, coaches. Um, people from your community, neighbors who you work with. So let's kind of talk about those in detail. Are you up for that? I'm I'm up for it. Well, let, let's start at the let, at the character references. Now, okay. I think a lot of the younger you are, the more relevant that is because you're not going to have the professional history. So if you're a job seeker and you don't have um, those those professional references to go to, and a lot of us do after we've been in the workforce for a while, then you really start you need to start thinking about who could be that character reference for you. Where, where do you recommend someone begin with that? So I like how you said, where do you start? Right. Because be, you, you can't just pick out a name of people, you know, you got to be really strategic about it. So you got to sit down and figure out who will paint you in the best light in what you're looking to do. Right. So, so again, character reference, you can pick a sports coach, a community leader, a neighbor, exactly how you said. But I mean, not all of those people, unless you you walk on water, not all of those people view you in the same light. So you might want to make a list based on what you're looking to do, who is going to speak for the skill set that this employer is looking for and make out that list. And those are the people who you should select as a character reference. Now, don't just blindly throw the their name out there once you figure out who you want to select give them a call and let them know ask them first can i use you as a reference here is what i'm trying to do here is what i applied for is this something you'll be able to do for me right and then it's it, it, it's you really have to be methodical about it right because you can't just pick anybody and then they'll say anything about you that might come back and bite you in the butt later on so let's let Put that aside for the moment, because I do want to uh, drill into how to approach someone, when to approach someone. Okay. Um, and so, but you're hundred percent on point with that. It's a really important thing to bring up. But the, the first thing you said that caught my attention was planning. Mm -hmm. it, it's not something you want to do on the fly, but it's something that uh, job seekers rarely do on the front end of their search. They're thinking about their re resume. They're thinking about how to find jobs, how to um, you know, get interviews. No one's really thinking about the reference uh, part, but that's okay. I mean, that's normal. So when you get there, take the time to plan, make a list, just like you said. It's easy, again, if you're in the been in the professional world for a long time, because most uh, organizations who are considering you for a job are going to want your professional references and not really get into the character references. So you, the younger you are, the more relevant that is. Yep. So make that list and and start off. And then consider, like you said, why one person would be appropriate for one scenario, a different person for another, make as long a list as you can. And then that gives you the best options to choose from when, when the time comes. Um, next group is your um, academic. Wow. Now, a lot of, uh, depending on where you went to school, right? How, how well you did as a student, right? I didn't probably have uh, a long list of academic references, truth be told, when I was coming out of school, that would not have been my strong suit. I'm and right that, there with you. <laughs> right? But but depending on who you are, let, let's say you're an introvert who um, doesn't have a lot of character references. You weren't involved in clubs and activities and teams and, and, and out and about in the community. That's okay. Hopefully you were involved academically and you have people to go to. And um, I think the same logic applies. So rights make a list. Who, who do you think should be on that list for academic uh, references? So it, it's, a professor, I love that idea, but just like the character reference, make a list, right? Because you don't know how a professor perceives you. Now, every, every um, I can't say every, almost every student has one professor, one teacher who they resonated with, right? And, and, and I remember fourth grade, Mrs. Anderson, she taught me how to write script. 
Nobody, uh, uh, cursive. Nobody does that anymore, right? Obviously, that's that's a long time ago. But that is a teacher that many moons later I still remember. So in college, there has to be a professor that you, that you resonated with and you've had that rapport with. That's the professor that you need to connect. They will paint you into that best light. If you got a professor who who kind of like threw the book at you and you kind of had rough uh, patches with, yeah, you may not want to pick that person or a classmate or a lab instructor, depending on what you did, somebody who who isn't who has experienced the output of your work that can articulate that in a way that will get you hired. Right. You want the person to say, wow, this this <laughs> I don't know what happened in class there, but they love this person. We need to have this person on board. So that's where I would start. What about you? Well, I agree with everything you said. And, and as someone who's checked a lot of references over the years, uh, there's nothing worse. It really, do you get bad, flat out bad references? It doesn't happen very frequently. People are afraid to do that. Number one. Right. I mean, no one really likes to. I've gotten a few people. <laughs> uh, candidates are. <laughs> Is you know, obvious for obvious reasons very hesitant to give uh, the names and contact information of people who are going not going to be favorable references. Yeah. Uh, so that's not surprising. But it's the ones who don't have anything to say at all. Those are the ones that bother me mm. as a recruiter when I'm considering a candidate. Uh, so you made the point: someone who can really speak to what you did and what you're all about. The ones that can't, it's odd. It's like why? Why did you give me this person as a reference? They barely, they seem to barely know you. So um, can I say th- can I say something in that real quick from the opposite end real quick? So I've gotten those. I've gotten a reference that they did not do a good job in 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 giving me what I needed about this person to get that person to to the next step. Now I start thinking two things from the employer's perspective: what kind of person is this, and the judgment of this person. You pick this person to paint you into the best light, and this is what they gave. Now your judgment is in question. So you've got to do your homework because that's how it looks like from my perspective, right? On my end. And I'm assuming it does to you as well, right? It does. Well, and and so let's move on to the professional references then, because I want to get into how, who you should ask and how and why a little more specific. Okay. I got you. Professional references are different to me. So I'll just give everyone a heads up on that, on this, that I, we've talked a lot about how you should depart when you when you put in notice. You should do it respectfully, professionally, give proper notice by default two weeks. And the reason for that is there's a very good chance those people who you work for are going to be called as a reference at some point in your future. Maybe not immediately, but this is where it makes a lot of sense and it's necessary to look up longer term. And so and that's hard to do. It's really hard to do when you're when you're when you're upset, when when you're mad, you're angry, you just want to get out. And once you make a decision to leave, I mean, let's be honest, we all know this feeling, right? You, every day seems like torture. Well, you're not doing it for the benefit of your employer, your soon to be former employer, you're doing it for your benefit. That's and hopefully the benefit of the people you like and care about who you worked with. I mean, that's, that's great. That's noble. But you're really doing it for yourself and, and above all else, because those people are going to be necessary in your life at some point. And I'll tell you why I say that. One of the commitments my staff and company for Corner Resources has made from day one is that we will check professional references mm-hmm. for our clients who expect that of us. And those professional references are not a buddy they're not uh, you know, someone you, you went to lunch with every day who worked at a different department. It's not the person who got you the job who, who you know, uh, doesn't work there anymore, an old college roommate. Okay. It's not that. We specifically want to speak to your former supervisors, the people who you reported to. And we, we don't say, hey, Ricky, you know, give me a reference. We say, who did you report to at ABC? Right. Now, that's the reference we want. It's the reference we need. It may not be the reference you want to give. <laughs> That's right. So that is on you as a candidate, as a as an employee who may have to to give that reference at some point. And we're not the only ones who who do that, right? I mean, I would say that's a smart thing to do. That's why we've we've had it in place for so long. So just know that how you leave is how you'll be thought of, right? That'll be the the the, the you know, that parting you know thought stays forever. So leave in the best possible light. That's my soapbox moment. I always need one, I think, right? That's well, it. Well, Pete, I mean, that that that's a good point because you're right. You know, when you put in your notice and you decide to leave, right, your rationale, your point of view change to, to some people because I've seen some people 
that they work to the bitter and I'm talking about to the bitter end as if they've never put in those two-week notice. And that is the employee you really don't want to lose, <laughs> right? Because yeah. they do an amazing job. But that's a really good point that people don't think about. As soon as you put in that two-week notice, they're going to want a reference from the people that you put in the two-week notice to. And I don't care how long you've been with the organization, two weeks, two years, 20 years, 30 years, you will be judged by those last 14 days and how you leave. <laughs> Perfect way to put it. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and as, again, someone who has checked a lot of references, if I'm checking one for you and they say, boy, do we miss Ricky? That's music to my ears as a recruiter, <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, he did everything right. Because even if you, even if you screwed up a lot along Actual the way, to your way. point, if you, if you leave, well, they're going to, they're going to think highly of you and they're going to want yeah. you in return, right? Um, versus the opposite. So proceed with caution there. Uh, you can try to give you know, people who were uh, mentors and coworkers and all that. And maybe you should, right? If I'm being completely transparent, giving advice to candidates, give the reference who's going to put you in the best light. Right. Someone who's going to be honest, of course, right? Not, not make up things, say you did things you didn't do, mm -hmm. but someone who you feel very confident will be favorable um, if called upon, right? That that's, I mean, that's just being smart. It is. And, and, and look, it's, it's, there's a lot of different ways you can go. You can go with a manager, you can go with a coworker, a mentor. If you go with a manager, let me tell you folks, make sure you talk to that manager. And again, it, it's, I, I think we're beating <laughs> this, we're yep. this topic right, to death. We are right. Just make sure that, that they, they, they really, really focus on it. Because if you've had some rough patches with your manager, don't use them. So Pete, now let me ask you a question. What if you are having some rough patches with your manager and your, your, your new company wants a reference from your current supervisor? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a reality. And I'll tell you, it just came up with um, someone on my team just in the past week was saying that there was a, uh, a candidate who said, I did not leave on good terms. And it was a short stint. You could see it. It kind of stuck out on the resume. I just happened to be looking at the resume and, and talking about this candidate and asking why, you know, do, did we have that reference? And and they they, they said um, they didn't want to give that reference. They it, it wasn't a good situation. They left on bad terms. They'd give it if they needed to, but it was going to be bad. Now, I appreciate that, right? I and I don't remember, I don't know if they got into detail about what actually happened with the recruiter, mm -hmm. but the candidate didn't hide from it either. And, and that's okay. We all have bad experiences. I mean, I can think of someone I reported to in the past who I can almost guarantee would not uh, speak very highly of me in many regards. I, we did, we were, we did not mesh, we'll say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was someone I inherited as a manager. This is a long, long time ago, but I still feel the same way about that <laughs> situation, right? I wouldn't say favorable things either. So that, but, but you know what? Now that's, that's on me. Because yeah. I'm the employee who you know, needed to, could have needed to rely on that. And I was the you know, person, and I've told this story in the past, how I, it was a learning opportunity for me because I didn't realize job number one is to make sure if I'm an employee somewhere that my manager is happy with my performance. I wasn't in that mindset back then. I was a lot younger. I thought I knew better. Maybe I did know better. Didn't matter, right? I wasn't <laughs> in charge. So we'll move on from that. But- that's a tough one and it comes yeah. up. So just be conscious of it. And that's why we're talking about this today. Um, it, so you you can say, well, gosh, I, I may not be able to stand the way that person looks or the sound of their voice, but I have to suck it up and smile until I'm out and leave in the best possible way or it's going to follow you. That's right. That's right. And, and, and yeah, it, it's, it's, you hit the nail right in the head there. Just make sure that you suck it up and it because the end goal is going to be to make sure that you land on your feet wherever it is that you go. That's it. So mm -hmm. now we we know who you who you should ask. How do you ask them? When do you ask them? Uh, we talked about making a list. It, you should make as long a list as you can. It won't take that long. Go go through your work history. Go through your contacts. Put those people together again. Professional, academic, character references. That's who you want to target, and rank them. Right. You might want to put them situationally because. Depending on your situ on your job search, how long it lasts, how many companies you uh, potentially interview with, 
you may need to give references more than once. And that's mm. something to be very conscious of. You don't want to go to the same person over and over and over, right? Don't you agree? No, I agree. It, it, it's, it's, I, just, I, I pause because I'm like, that makes sense. That definitely makes sense. You want a variety of people to give a variety of different points of view. So I never thought of it that way, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it, well, huh. if you go through a long enough interview process, you're going to encounter it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So no, 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 I get it. Look, it, and, and you will encounter that, but guys, everybody listening at the end of the day, you've got to be relatable. In everything you do, you have to be relatable. People have to like you, right? The people who do not like you are not gonna are not gonna give you a glowing reference. So, you know, as you need to work just as hard, you need to work just as hard at making sure you provide the right references, and as you do at your own personal um, uh, how you come across to people, right? Wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you need to work on your personal skills just to make sure, at the very least, they give you a glowing review? Yeah. So that's so we want to approach someone in advance. So make your list, yeah, right? and then and then reach out to these people. And and you know, if you were on my list, Ricky, I would say I'd either send you a message because you don't want to put someone too much on the spot. Yeah. You don't want to make it awkward. So I would recommend, in many cases, sending a, a quick message, you know, via email, uh, and say, "Hey, Ricky, um, looking, I'm on the job market right now. I'm actively interviewing." Would you be willing to, if you know, would you be okay if I listed you as a professional reference if asked, right? I want to give you the opportunity to say no. And you yeah. may have a reason to, you may yeah. say, and, and this is hard, right? I mean, you may say, sure, Pete, I'd, I'd, I'd love to, or you may say, my company won't let me, right? That happens at times. I'm not allowed to, um, mm -hmm. or, hey, I'm not sure that would be the best approach for you <laughs> to take, right? That could happen. But you want to give that person a heads up and then commit to only giving their name out when the job is looks serious. So yes. you know, let's stop and, and say, do not put your references on your resume. That is unnecessary. It's uh, And I would say it's inappropriate, sort of. I mean, it's not a, a, a huge offense. But if someone is generous enough to say, yes, you can list me as a reference, then don't take advantage of that generosity by putting their contact information out <laughs> to the world. And I do mean the world when you post your resume on LinkedIn or uh, any of the job boards, yeah. it's seen, it's potentially seen by countless recruiters who share it. And it, it, it just, it's a bad idea. I'm surprised it still happens as much as it does. I, I, it's not a great idea. People will try to contact your references for all kinds of reasons that have nothing to do with you. Um, that Know that above all else. Well, from the other side of the fence, when I see that, when I see the same reference being used over and over again, I'm like, what a lucrative job. I'm sure this person is it's it's is is being paid 50 bucks a pop to do these references, right? But we can see it on the other on the other side. Now, Pete, I gotta tell you something that happened to me um not to a couple of years ago. Somebody did exactly what you said. They sent me an email saying, Hey Ricky, I'm looking for this job. I, I'm applying for this job. Would you mind being a reference? I said no. I haven't talked to this person in 15 years. I can't, I can only speak to what that person did up until the last time we worked together. Right. So I don't know how comfortable I would feel in giving a reference because I don't know what this person has done in 15 years. So right. the point I'm making is, is make sure it's somebody that you, you at least converse with, you meet with on a regular basis, or at least recently. Don't reach out to people that you haven't, that you haven't connected with in years because, number one, it's just, okay, you only want me for my reference, number one. And number two, you just don't know how comfortable they are in giving information that's outdated. And from a recruiter's perspective, they're going to think it's odd as well because if you give me a reference from 15 years ago, I'm going to wonder why you don't have any more recently. Yeah. And, and it's just not a good look. It's it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for the purpose of the resume, right? I mean, mm. you're not the same person you were 15 years ago. I'm trying to find out who you are now, what kind of professional experience or academic experience you you uh, have lately. So that that's that's a bad idea all around. So ask the person, do it in writing, call them, whatever you're more comfortable with, depending on the nature of your relationship. Um, and then if they agree, send them your resume. 
make sure that they know what you've said that you've done, right? That they're going to be asked to speak to. And don't expect that you know your dates of employment, you know your job titles, you know the work that you performed. Don't expect your reference to remember that. Make it yeah. easy for them. Set yourself up for success. Send them your resume so they have it in front of them if that call comes. Pete, that is such a great point that I don't think anybody thinks about. And <laughs> nobody thinks about that piece. Yes, you've got make it easy for them. Send them the job you applied for, the uh, um, information on the company, and just and your your resume. Once they have that on there, let me tell you, that recruiter, if I hear that somebody mentions everything almost to the T, right? Okay, this person prepared, they know what they're doing, got a glowing review, gold star. Absolutely. And and here's what I prefer when I'm asked to give a reference. It's Pete, would you be willing first, right? I understand if not, you know, please let me know. Great. So give the person an out, ask them to confirm. And then once I agree, then here's 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 the information. Here's what I shared with them. And then here's who you can expect to call from. So give that information as well. So the person's on the lookout for it. I don't typically, oh, I don't typically, I never answer calls from unidentified numbers. It's not right. something I do. It's never someone offering anything that I want, it turns out, right? Uh, so if I, but if I know, hey, this person you know, may be calling you from Atlanta or Detroit, I'll look for those phone calls because I, if I agree to be a reference, I'm, I need to make good on that and try to help out the individual who um, I agreed to help. So, but otherwise I could miss that call. And, and, and that, yeah, that, that would, yeah, that would, when yeah, no one wins in that scenario. Well, Pete, I'll tell you this. If I agree to be somebody's reference and they send me all this information that you just said to set me up for success, when the, when the hiring authority calls me to check, I'm like, look, I don't know what you're about to ask, but just on how this person prepared me for this. You should hire them for that <laughs> because they thought about it. They gave me all the information. I know all about you. I know all about the org. I mean, don't go that route. You know what I mean, right? But it 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 says on who you are as a person, who you are as an employee. When you set everybody up for success, and that tells me the hiring authority. I'm like, okay, this is exactly how they're going to treat every issue coming on board. Another gold star. Absolutely, and um, it, it's all about preparation. Yep. More absolutely. You, just like a cover letter, just like going above and beyond. Uh, you know, it, don't be like every other candidate. Do do the most you can do to give yourself the best chance for success. And yes, I worked in the cover letter comment for you. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I I was waiting for it. But Pete, something else hit me. Something else hit me. Something you said earlier, because if you don't have the uh, the work experience, so you you know you 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 rely on your friends and family. What do you say if somebody used their mother as a reference? No. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm the same way. Absolutely not. Right. That's... Don't because obviously she's gonna give a glowing review. If she doesn't, you got bigger issues than not taking this job. <laughs> and so yeah, there's a question. What yeah, this is one of the things we wanted to address on this show today is if you don't have a reference, that's why we or if you don't think you have a reference to give, you probably do. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um it's tough if you haven't built rapport yeah. with any any professor, teacher, anyone at your high school, if you're if you're fi looking for a job out of high school or college, um, and you don't have any work experience, that's that's going to be tough, right? I mean, it will be if you have no one to give. You so hopefully anyone listening has built a relationship somewhere with someone, but when all else fails, is candidates. I'll, I will tell you this. I kind of alluded to it a, a little bit ago with the story about um, a recent. Canada in, in my staffing world that had a short stint and didn't want to give the reference, be open and honest. If yep. you have been a hermit and you haven't gone out in the world and built rapport and gotten involved in things, be upfront about that yep. and say, listen, Agreed. this is, this is going to be a hurdle for me. Help, help me figure out how to overcome it. The more open you are as a candidate, the more transparent you are about those things, the more accommodating recruiters and hiring managers will be. That, that's been my experience for the many years I've done this and the thousands of jobs I've been involved with people getting. Um, the more open and honest, even if it's bad news, that tells me who you are. And listen, if if someone is only going to tell me the the, the best news, then that's not who I trust, right? I trust someone. Yeah. I, I'll trust those who are willing to share the bad news to put it out front. 
and that's always right. Bad news early is good news. That's Big right. believer in that. I learned that from you. Yeah. Tell, tell yeah, you it's and say it before you're asked. Yeah. So let me ask you this then, because you you sent out all the requests, right? You prepared everybody. Everything went well, right? Now these are people. The references you asked, they're taking time out of their day to yep. do this for you. They're taking time out of their busy schedule because they're not being paid for this. Send out a thank you note. Send a thank you afterwards, right? Thank you for being a reference. Send flowers, edible arrangements. Send something. Flowers. You, always, you love the flowers. You love it's, it. Let me tell you, people respond well to that, man. And, they and really respond well. I'm sure they do. That's that's a lot, right? I mean, but yeah, 100%. Send a thank you note at the very least, an email at the very least, send a handwritten note. You know I love that. Yeah. But yeah, and if you're if you want to send something, um, a, a care package of some sort, that is truly above and beyond. Maybe only do that after you get the job, right? Because if you're on the market, I'm I, I, I'm I don't feel pressure to do that. It's a wonderful gesture, but if that reference was a big factor in you getting your dream job. I love that idea. Right? Take them to dinner. Absolutely. I got this because of that glowing reference. Let's go to uh, Denny's. 100%. Go, <laughs> yeah. go to Denny's. Okay. Depends how big of a breeze I got. Maybe stick with the flowers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, true, true. I like that. So, so Pete, it, it, look, what if I don't have a reference at all? Can I get hired without one? It, potentially, but sometimes not, right? I mean, okay. it all depends right. on what you're being hired for. So if you are... um a 10 year career professional and you have jobs on your resume uh, and you say, I don't have any references. Now, again, company like mine is, is four corner is going to ask who you reported to. I'm not going to going to ask you for references and mm -hmm. you know, that what it, it I'm going to, I'm going to ask who you report to. And so if you say, I don't know, I don't remember, I'm not going to give you that information. Red flag. Those are huge red flags. Red flag. Um, but we know a lot of companies don't ask. So they skip over that process or they let can candidates get away with being elusive and not answering. So yes, of course you can get a job, but you'll be excluded from certain jobs. Um, if you're young, it's not nearly as big of a deal, right? Sure. I mean, that, that yeah, just yeah. should go without saying, but if, but, but still, if you have, you know, if you list activities, for example, on your resume, or if you went to through a master's program or at a small college, and you um, you you uh, list on your resume the involvement you had at those schools, and you can't give p names of people involved in those activities, um, that's also a red flag. So I I think hopefully what we've shared today is you have references whether you realize it or not, um, ah. depending on your stage the stage in your career, but. Um, yeah, if you're not willing to give any of those, that's going to send a, a, a tough message to those who are recruiting. So, so what if I have four references? I've gone through the process. I've gotten my list, my pros and cons for each one. I submit them. They None of them respond to the hiring manager. So that's that's happens, you know, yeah. you know, when our recruiters are checking references. And what we'll ask to do is have the uh, the candidate follow up with those people and say, Hey, I've called Ricky a few times for you. Um, he's not responsive. Can you help me get a hold of him? All right. I mean, but if you've asked Ricky to be, if, you know, if I've asked for that reference up front and done it the way we're recommending, then that probably won't happen. And yeah. it, I think it happens more often um, in a scenario where the references are asked the way we we like to ask, which is not who the candidate may have had a list of. So those are a little, those are kind of opposing things, right? What I'm recommending candidates do is different than what I would recommend employers do. Um, yeah. That's that's it, reality. It's yeah, it's reality. Yeah. So, you know, the the it happens, right? And but it, every company handles those things differently. Hey, you gave me the references; they're not responsive. Good enough, right? I mean, it's a, a lot, that happens a lot more than most people would probably assume. And now, so let's say let's take it further. Let's say they do respond, and they gave. Not a glowing reference, right? They went the opposite way. I mean, how do you follow up back with that reference? Or should you follow up back with them at all? Who, who is a candidate? Yeah, as a candidate, and your reference uh, gave you the opposite, the opposite of a... Uh... Yeah, it's probably not going to know, right? Well, I mean, you know, yeah. The recruiter's not going to go back and say, well, I would have hired you, but you know, Jane said... Your you... recruiter won't say your references didn't check out? 
Um, I, you know, I don't know how a recruiter would handle yeah. that, uh, uh, personally, but they wouldn't give detail, right? That's true. Uh, yeah. That's I, true. Look, if I'm a recruiter, depending on the situation, I, I may want to give that candidate indication that you, you know, should consider you know, giving different references next time. Um, but I'm not going to, um, you know, yeah, I'm not going to do anything that's a breach of confidence if I if someone's you know, willing to share uh, that someone wasn't a great employee. So that's a tough that's a tough one to a tough road to go down. But once again, if you are a candidate and you ask up front, are you willing to be a reference? You know, are you comfortable with that? And someone said, you, in almost every case, if someone is not going to be favorable, they'll tell you, don't, you know, no, I'm not willing to do it. Mm, yeah, so that's true. it doesn't happen that often that way. All right. Well, I mean, it's it, it, these are things to to think about, because I know a candidate is really worried about the interview, really worried about what to say. And then sometimes the reference piece is, oh, got three names. Boom. Send that over. And folks, it, it, it's if if you, if you haven't gotten our 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 point from 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 this episode is you've got to invest in the time. As much as you invest in time in preparing for the interview, this needs to be part of that preparation process and make sure you got the right people that they're going to call. Right. It's, it's, it, it's to, I mean, to me, that's just as important as everything else. It is. And that's a perfect way to close. So yes, yeah. thank you very much. That's uh, I think we covered it all. I think we did, man. I, 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 I think we did. I would love to hear what people think. You, you know what I would love to hear, Pete? I want to hear some horror stories, right? Because it's good to hear those things, right? And then dissect them. So let's put the call out there. If anybody's out there had a horror story with uh, with um, uh, uh, references, like maybe they didn't turn out the way you thought they were, let us know. Let us know. Zengig. What's the address again? What's the email address? I forgot. Questions at Zengig.com. Got it. Questions at Zengig.com. Send it to the questions at Zengig.com. Let us know. Uh, obviously, we're not going to use your name, but I know there's horror stories out there. Send them in so we can, you know, just th dissect them and then help everybody else out. Of right. Process. If we get enough, we'll do that next show. Absolutely. Right, right. that. All right. Well, thank you for listening. Ricky, thank you as always. Drive safe. Have a great rest of your day. And we'll uh, we'll talk very soon. Have a good one, folks. Have an awesome weekend. Good night.